I mean, we share a lot up here, and um, I'm the founder of Village Home Education Resource Center, and this is our 12th year. We're unique from the other programs up here, but also we share a lot in common. So I really resonated with your conversation about trust, um, because at Village Home, all of our um, systems, these hidden systems that aren't hidden, they're actually visible, um, are based on trust. The idea that the student is a trustworthy person, the teacher is trustworthy, um, the parents are trustworthy, um, the staff is trustworthy. So um, all of that is a foundation upon which we can have real, authentic interactions in the classroom. And then um, Alan's talks uh, talk about choice and the student has to have choice in the equation um, also really resonated with me and is true at Village also. Um, but we are unique in that our structure is, a, is fundamentally different. So we are organized like a community college starting at kindergarten. Um, we offer about 200 classes a week and uh, we offer them in a catalog just like PCC does. Um, and students pick and choose what they want to take based on their interests, based on their educational goals, um, and that is done in conversation with their family is what we encourage, obviously, um, because another important part of Village Home is that the family is part of this equation. The family is honored as the manager of the student's education. Um, that's not our place to do. It's the people that the student is most intimately connected with that is in that primary role, except for in cases where um, the student doesn't have those people in their life. And then when that happens, we have ways to support that student um, to help them make good educational choices for themselves. So this past Friday, we closed off our spring term, and one of the kids came into the office to say goodbye for the summer. And she's 12, her name is Emily, and um, she shared a story with me that she was watching a YouTube video, and the, the, uh, some girl about her age was doing a YouTube video talking about how excited she was for summer to be here and that she just couldn't wait to get out of school. And, you know, so Emily shared this whole YouTube video with me and, and then, you know, just said, I don't feel that way at all. And that is true for all, I, I'm, I'm serious, all of the Village Home students. So they actually want to be there. They actually would prefer to be there than anywhere else that they can think of. And so over the um, holiday break in December, the, you know, we have a Yahoo group and the parents and the kids are posting, when are we coming back? Please, <laughs> let's come back. Um, and that's because the, uh, the classroom environment is authentic and relevant to them. And that is something that is really missing in a lot of mainstream education these days, is this relevancy. Like, why does this matter to you? <coughs> and um, I think that that's something that is unique um, about Village Home. And, and it's, it's relevant for a few reasons. Um, the class schedule does not come out of thin air, and it also doesn't come out of a list of uh, requirements. So we, have, we do not have an idea that there is any student requirement to take any particular class. Um, there is not a linear path through which students pass through classes. Um, we have kids that, uh, well, I'll tell you about Peter, who is now studying engineering at Cal Poly, and he is a brilliant engineer. And he loved science and math, and he took all science and math. I mean, all science and math got to be about 16 or so and decided he wanted to go to be an engineer. He would need to go to college, you know, needed to do these things. And he had not worked at all on language arts skills, writing skills. It just wasn't important to him. Um, but he realized that he needed to be able to do that, to communicate effectively in writing in order to have a successful university career that, career that would lead him to his career of choice. And so he sat down when he was 16 and like, figured out how to put together a really great paper and how to write a clear sentence and how to formulate ideas in writing. And he really had not done that up until that time. And um, it's just a, a beautiful example, I think, of this idea that we have of education being this linear thing 
where, oh, you have to learn what a noun is in third grade, and then you have to learn what a prepositional phrase is in fifth grade, and you know, all of that is really artificial. And um, what we have found from the hundreds and hundreds of learners that we've had pass through the Village Home Doors now is that learning is not a linear thing. It uh, comes in these huge um, spurts, and um, it's all driven by students' interest and by um, the subject matter being relevant to them. So um, we like to think about a student's world um, in a traditional school is comprised of this world called school and then this world called family and then this third uh, universe that they have of real life. And um, for a student in a traditional school setting, there are pretty big walls between those three sections. And um, in a lot of ways, they're kept from real life completely, except for through their family. Um, and in a lot of ways, family is kept out of this universe called my high school or my, um, my school. Um, and families come in to these environments just in these prescribed kind of a way. You know, oh, you come in on Tuesday morning and, um, you know, Xerox the handouts for the class. And, you know, those are the kinds of um, interactions that parents have oftentimes. Not always, there are exceptions to that, of course. But what we want is a learning community where there aren't any of those boundaries, um, where uh, family and education and this thing called real life, the real world, all are integrated. And that's what helps keep the education relevant for the kids. Um, our teachers, our class schedule, I said, doesn't bubble out of nowhere. Um, it comes from, a, from two main um, flows. One is a flow from the community. So the community says, these are the kind of classes we're interested in. Um, these are the kinds of people we want to learn from. And then the other flow comes from prospective teachers or faculty, current faculty members. So I basically start with the idea that if there is an instructor who wants to teach something, they have to care about it. They have to really want to teach that um, subject matter or authentically be interested in it themselves. And if that authentic interest is not there, then how could there, how could a spark, or a spark happening in a student would be much less likely, right? So teachers propose courses based on what they think is interesting and on what they think is relevant today. And um, so we offer this, um, assortment of classes. You see some things that you recognize like Algebra 1, you know, you, you see some things you recognize in our schedule, but then there's also lots of things that you wouldn't recognize and you wouldn't ever see. Um, we offered a history course called The Bite that was about the social history of food um, in the world and they talked about all aspects of food and how that affects culture and society and um, how it's affected history over time. So um, that's not anything that is in any um, history standard, so to speak, but what the kids were doing around that topic um, certainly would have touched upon um, history standards in, um, in a high school or junior high. So um, we think basically that um, learning, um, you know, when, you're, when we looked at Village 12 years ago when we started, it was like, wow, what does the school, we call ourselves a resource center, we are not a school, we are an alternative to school. Um, and, you know, what is it that we can do that can't be accomplished anywhere else? And in today's society, kids can learn things all over the place. They can push a button and they can be shown a brilliant video with Neil deGrasse explaining black holes, better than anybody I know that could explain black holes. Um, and so they can learn this really complex topic in very efficiently from this other source. So we let go of the idea that the school is the center of all the knowledge. It's just not the case for these kids at all. Um, and that the education comes from multiple sources. And um, that's a really beautiful thing. Um, we believe that the students have a natural drive to learn, and they do. And it varies from individual to individual. It varies across a lifespan a little bit. But um, there is a natural drive to learn. 
And when students evaluate their classes at Village, the very first response on the evaluation form is, as a result of taking this class, are you more interested in this subject? And they answer on a Likert scale. Um, and to me, that is the sign of a great classroom experience. Because if we can just ignite a student to be interested in the subject matter and to want to delve deeper, or maybe they're going to delve and they're going to go off on this little tangent and end up in a totally different spot. But if we can be inspiring them to be open to learning and to be engaged in the world as a learner, then um, that's, the, that's the greatest thing we can do. Um, we don't have a standardized curriculum. We don't have a standardized path. Um, and simply because it just is not relevant for kids. Um, and uh, personal. So it is a very personal place. Village Home is very personal. And our average class size is this year 10 students. So they have this um, learning experience in the four walls or not. We have classes all over the place. We had a class that built a dune buggy and you know we we do all kinds of things but um, we'll just think about it in terms of happening in a in a location we do have two campuses with classrooms um, so what happens in that classroom is uh, is personal there's only 10 11 12 15 kids in the room at a time so there's plenty of opportunity for the teacher to actually meet the individual where they are and the classroom experience is uh, very collegial at Village Home. And I think that that's because we're a grade-free, test-free environment, um, and because kids are not on a standardized linear path. So there is no, I mean, we know as educators, there is no such thing as a average 12-year-old, for goodness sakes. They're all just as different as they can be. But we try really hard in traditional schools to make an average 12-year-old, right? who is supposed to have these skills in line and is supposed to be learning those skills this year. Um, since we don't have that assumption in our system, then the environment in the classroom is very collegial, very non-competitive. It doesn't really matter if Alan can't write a paragraph. That doesn't make me judge him in any way, shape, or form, um, even if I'm writing a beautiful essay, um, because nobody is on the same path. So um, we also have a lot of things outside of the classroom that build relatedness. So in between classes, the kids have a 15 minute break, not four and a half minutes or you know whatever it is. Um, you create your own flow of the day. There isn't an assigned lunch period. There isn't, you know, you have your own rhythm of your own day, but we have plenty of opportunities for you to intersect with everybody else um, that you want to. We have mixed age, uh, mixed age a learning environment too, so all different ages together, um, literally in the same building and even in the same classroom. So um, we're, we sometimes have kids who are very asynchronous in their learning, so um, like we have a couple of uh, Davidson Scholar type kids at Village who are just geniuses and, I mean, like really, and um, so they're in anatomy and physiology when they're nine, and that's okay. Um, it doesn't matter to us, and um, we think that's, a, that's great. There are a few things that we do for teens that we hold off on age limits because of their social and emotional needs that are also not hidden, but um, right out there. Um, we have uh, two campuses, and both campuses dedicate at least 25% of their space to hangout space for the family um, to be, and so it's a very welcoming place, and there's always, there's a lounge and a nursery and, you know, what have you, so that um, families can be on campus and students can also be on campus in a casual way, um, which we think is a really important part of, um, of the learning environment. I'm trying to think what else I want to say that hasn't already been covered so eloquently here. Um, we also don't have a lot of rules. We have a few. We have a code of conduct that is basically respect yourself and others and respect the property and, you know, very simple. Um, and um, we have, we find that we have very few 
even though we have 450 children, it's a lot of bodies, um, we have very few disciplinary um, kinds of things because they are actually there because they want to be. That is like the foundation of, of everything. And so it changes um, the entire conversation if there's, a, if there's an issue of disruption in the classroom or something like that. The conversation is completely different because there's this assumption that um, you're choosing this, so what's going on for you? And then we work with the student to find out. Um, I think that, oh, and Don also wanted me to talk. We're also unique because we actually started out in the beginning, 12 years ago, as a publicly funded program. And we were um, in the alternative education bucket of the um, Department of Education. And we lived there for a couple of years before we moved into um, private funding. And so we're now tuition based. But we started out there um, serving seven districts, um, serving the homeschool population in seven districts. And our mission was to provide social and educational enrichment for homeschooled students. And um, we experienced a level of success that we um, actually didn't anticipate in terms of growth and you know what have you. And in year two, the Department of Education, we got a contract with Portland Public Schools and the Department of Education came out to do a site visit and they did a whole analysis of what was going on in the classroom and you know and we actually got incredibly high scores on student engagement on classroom environment on you know all those things that matter um, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and um, they wanted us to uh, deliver the whole education to the child and of course we don't really believe there there is this finite thing called the whole education it depends on the student, and it depends on the moment of time you're talking about for the student. Um, so we had several negotiations about what that could look like, and we um, came up with some creative ways to take a look at um, the whole education and couldn't really come to an agreement about that. So at that juncture, we went into a private tuition model. and. Um, and we've been operating there for the past 10 years or so. Um, so um, I think that that's it. Uh, to give you an idea, I have a faculty of about 45 teachers. Uh, most of them t teach part-time. Like they come in, they teach a few classes a week um, that's directly related to their interests and passions and expertise. Um, I do have a handful of full-time faculty members that are there um, that teach a heavy load, so to speak. But um, most of our faculty is uh, more part-time in nature. Our average student attends five classes a week, but the actual range is from one to there all the time, basically. Um, so we have a, a whole uh, spectrum of choices being made along that, along that line. And then we also have a part of our program that I think is fantastic, um, which we call member activities. And so these are not cl classes. They are tuition free and they're available to our community and they're led by members of the community. So they're led by students or parents um, and they tend to um, give a great foundation for gathering as a community around an interest so um, we have a chess club, and we have a Pokemon card club, and we have a Bananagrams time, and we have um, book clubs, and um, a, a club called Fun with Physics, and they come in and do hands-on physics stuff. Um, so all of that is a way for the older uh, learners in the community to express leadership and express themselves, and also for the parents to really be involved. Um, in an authentic kind of a way also. So that's, that's in a nutshell. Great. And the hidden